Hey everybody, welcome to another Crack a Pack special on the Mandalik. I'm John. As always, we've done uh, five or six of these now. We've got uh, several to go before we open a pack of everything in Magic's history. And of course, there's more packs coming out every month. Well, not every month, but every few months. Anyways, we're going back in time now uh, to when I was on my break of Magic, so I don't necessarily know this set. But we're going back to Planar Chaos. Planar Chaos was the middle set of the Time Spiral block. It went Time Spiral, Planar Chaos, Future Sight. Uh, unfortunately, there's no Tarmogoyfs in here. That's in Future Sight. But there is Damnation. So I'd be pretty happy to open that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know anything about this draft format. I have no idea. So I'm going to be completely guessing as to what the cards are here. So if you have experience with Planar Chaos, let me know. But let's crack this open and see if we get ourselves uh, maybe a Foil Damnation. I will say I am glad that they started making the little cut in the booster packs that make them easier to open these days, and I'm excited for the Modern Masters packs that will have the, uh, the corrugated uh, rip tab on them. All right, so first up we've got ourselves a Dreamscape ad Artist. It's a one and a blue, one, one. For two and a blue, you can tap it, discard a card, sacrifice a land, search your library for up to two basic land cards, and put them into play then shuffle your library. Okay, so it costs three and a card and a land for you to get two lands. That doesn't seem great. Maybe this has an archetype. Maybe this has cards it interacts with. Um, but it doesn't seem great because you're usually going to discard a land, I think. Which means this card is costing you two lands to get two lands. I don't get this card. Um, if you know what this card fits in, oh, uh, let me know. Um, but I can't see a reason I would ever want to play this card. So uh, I'm not going to take that. All right, let's see what we get next. We get Ridged Crisite. Ridged, Ridged Cusite. It's a single black for a weird-looking flea thing. It's a 1-1. One, one. Uh, it has one and a black. Tap it. Discard a card. Uh, target creature gets plus 1, plus 0. Oh and gains first strike until end of turn. So there must be a discard theme in Planar Chaos. Um, so discard a card, target creature gets plus one, plus one, and first strike until end of turn uh, for two mana. That doesn't seem awful, um, especially if there is some sort of discard theme or, or recursion theme or, or something going on here. Um, giving a creature on demand first strike and a little tiny boost, uh, basically Kindled Fury, or Kindled Fury is uh, pretty okay. Ultimately, this is a 1-1 one, one for 1, uh, and I don't think it's going to be terribly playable because of that. Uh, but the, abil the ability is a little bit cool. All right, next up we have Dawn Charm. This is a 1 and a white for an instant, and you choose 1. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. Eh, don't play Fog. Um, or, regenerate target creature. It's okay. Or, counter target spell that targets you. Um, depending on what kind of burn and spells that target you are in this format, that could be decent. Um, so, quick note, um, Dawn, or sorry, Planar Chaos had, uh, color shifting. So, abilities that really belong to other colors were in other colors. So, for example, that black card gave you Kindled Fury's ability. It gave First Strike and, uh, plus one, plus oh. That's still a little bit blackish, but it's much more reddish. Um, Dawn Charm here... Uh, regenerating target creature is very green. Uh, counter target spell that targets you, that's very blue. Um, so there is some kind of stuff happening with the color pie here. Um, but yeah, I don't think this card's good. Um, you know, this is basically a, a green-blue card. Uh, fog, you don't play. Uh, a spell that just regenerates a creature and does nothing else. Eh. And the counter, I mean, again, it depends on what's in the format, but I can't imagine there being that much. Maybe you'd pull this out of the sideboard if you are against some sort of burn-heavy deck, or if there was a a, a pretty serious game-ending spell that targets you or something, but otherwise I, I don't see myself taking this. Next up we have Shaper Parasite. It's a 1 blue blue for a 2-3, and uh, it has Morph. Good old Morph, so uh, you can cast this as a 2-2 two -two for 3 colorless mana. When Shaper Parasite is turned face-up, target creature gets plus two plus two or or sorry plus two minus two or minus two plus two until end of turn uh so you can unmorph this guy 
uh, at instant speed, of course, it's a special action, um, and potentially kill something or, or make it probably lose in combat, but you're going to make it more powerful too, so it's probably going to trade. Or you can uh, maybe save a creature by upping its toughness or something. Uh, interesting card, I've got to say, and Morph is always... Uh, pretty decent because it helps out your curve uh, you can't get mana screwed if you have morph cards in your hand or not mana screwed color screwed if you have morph cards in your hand um, seems okay doesn't seem first pickable but seems okay to me next up we have reality acid yep reality acid uh, two and a blue for an, an aura enchant permanent and it has vanishing three uh, so basically it comes into play with three, uh, what is it, fade counters or vanishing counters? Time counters. comes into play with three time counters in each upkeep. You take time counter off. When there's no more time counters, you sack this. So this is going to stick around for three turns, basically. When Reality Acid leaves play, so after the end of three turns, Enchanted Permanence Controller sacrifices it. So basically you're throwing acid on an opponent's creature. Or permanent, actually, because it's Enchant Permanent. Uh, and then in three turns, it's going to go away. That's an awfully long time. Uh, three turns in Magic in Limited is usually, you know, not necessarily, or at least in formats that I like anyways, 50% of the game, but 25% uh, of the game, it's pretty solid. Um, so this seems like a really, really, really slow removal spell, especially since it doesn't come down on turn three at the uh, earliest. Um, it could be good, I'm not sure. Maybe this was a slower format. If it was, then I see this being much more decent. But the fact that you still have to hold off what presumably is a pretty serious threat for three full turns, eh, it's not the best for me. Next up, we have Deadly Grub. This is a two and a black for a three one. It also has Vanishing Three, so it's going to stick around for three turns. When it's put into a graveyard from play, so whether it vanished or died, um, if it had no time counters on it, so it is only when it vanishes, put a 6-1 green insect creature token on, into play with this creature can't be the target of spells or abilities, so with Shroud. Um, okay, so it's a 3-1 that if it sticks around for three turns becomes a 6-1 Shroud. That seems uh, not awful. Um, but as we've seen with Conifer Strider lately in Dragons of Tech here, uh, you know, X1 Hexproofs aren't that good. They, they, they don't die to burn, that's fine, but they die to every combat ever. Um, at least with uh, Conifer Strider, you can target it with spells. You can throw counters on it and whatnot. Um, but this has Shroud on it. You can't even target it yourself. So, yeah, it doesn't seem that good to me, to be honest. Um, Maybe if you were in a removal-heavy deck, and by the time that 6-1 was going to come out, you were pretty sure you were going to be facing a clear board, but that seems a little bit magical Christmas landy to me. Next up, we have uh, Sitanul Wood Readers, 2 and a green for a 1-4. It has Kicker, 2 and a green, so you can pay 2 and a green to cast this, plus an extra 2 and a green if you want to. When Sitanul Wood Readers enter, or, sorry, comes into play... If the kicker cost was paid, draw two cards. So this is a 3-mana 1-4 or a 6-mana 1-4 that draws you two cards. 6-mana for a 1-4 that draws you two cards doesn't seem the best to me. Two cards is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. I love that ability. But the fact that it's just a 1-4 eh, doesn't seem all that good to me. Next up, we have Brain Gorgers. Brain Gorgers is 3 and a black for a 4-2, a zombie. When you play Brain Gorgers, any player may sacrifice a creature. If a player does, counter Brain Gorgers. It also has Madness, which means that if you were to discard this card, so that's where those uh, discard cards come from. Uh, so if I were to play, uh, what was it? Uh, if I were to play uh, Rigid Kusite and I were to discard Brain Gorgers, I could pay one in a black to play Brain Gorgers instead of paying three in a black. Um, yeah, it's not bad. Uh, so it's a 4-2 that basically you can bring it down potentially fairly early. Uh, if there's a free discard outlet out there, you could bring this down on turn 2 if it was a, a turn 1 free discard outlet. Uh, but I'm not sure what exists out there. And your opponent can counter this 4-2 by sacking a permanent, which doesn't seem like something I would do all that often. A 4-2 doesn't 
sound all that scary to me, to be honest. Um, yeah, this seems just like a, a very solid filler card and not much else. So not first picking. Simeon Spirit Guide. People know this guy. This guy just played in Legacy. Um, two and a red for a 2-2. Two -two. You can remove Simeon Spirit Guide in your hand from the game. So if he's in your hand, it, it's a weirdly worded phrase. If he's in your hand, you can exile him from your hand and add red mana to your mana pool. This guy's played in Legacy because, of course, you know, if you have four of these guys in your starting hand and you've got a land, you've got five mana on turn one, um, which is pretty good. Uh, I don't know how this guy performed in Limited. Um, somebody would have to let me know about that. Um, but he performs pretty well in Constructed. Now, that does make me think that this is one of those cards that, while pretty good in Constructed, doesn't really cut it in Limited. You would need multiples of these... Uh, uh, ultimately, I think you're probably going to get one of these, maybe two, and uh, you'd have to do something pretty crazy with it to really go off. Uh, so I don't think I'd be first picking it. Next up, we have Merfolk uh, Thematurgist. It's two and a blue for a one-two. You can tap it to switch target creature's power and toughness until end of turn. So, uh, you know, you're probably going to be doing this to hopefully screw around with combat or maybe make a, a, a little tiny burn spell. Uh, take out like a 2-5 or something like that. Um, or, you know, you could attack with your 2-5 and, and make it into a 5-2 when it's attacking. Uh, there's probably some cool stuff you could do with this. I don't know if it's going to be ultimately super useful. I don't know what the average uh, powers and toughnesses are. Um, looks like we've seen fairly uh, uh, asynchronous it's not quite the right word. Uh, power and toughness is 4-2s, 3-1s, 6-1s, 2-3s, 1-4s, etc. So maybe this could have a place, but I don't think so. Next up, we have Healing Leaves. This doesn't sound like something I'd pick. Uh, it's a 1 and a green instant. Choose 1. Target player gains 3 life. No. Or prevent the next 3 damage that would be dealt to target creature or player this turn. No. Um, not something I'm interested in playing. This is... Uh, very old style magic card that has never really been good. It's appealed to newer players, um, but then they learn how little life gain matters, and uh, yeah, not looking to play this. Seems like a weak pack to me. Maybe I just don't know the format. Um, enslave, four black black for an aura, enchant creature. You control enchanted creature. All right, so it's mind control. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, enchanted creature deals one damage to its owner. So that would be you because you control it for the time being. Um, yeah, I, I would take and play this. I would take and play Mind Control that deals a damage to me a turn. This seems totally solid to me. I, I'm fairly happy to see this card, I think. Uh, yeah, Mind Control, always good. Next up we have uh, Aura Mancer's Guys. Two blue-blue for an aura. Enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two for each aura enchanted to it. And it has Vigilance. Uh, sounds like a constructed card to me. Sounds like uh, probably not something that you could uh, reliably throw together in draft. Uh, maybe there's enough auras around that you could, um, but ultimately I feel like that's more constructed. Next up we have Core Dirge. This is a two black instant. All damage that would be dealt this turn to target creature you control by a source of your choice is dealt to another target creature instead. So this is similar to some spells we've seen recently and uh, spells that we usually see in white. So again, more uh, color shifting here. So basically, you get to prevent all damage that's going to happen to a single creature of yours from a single source, and you get to throw it at some other creature. So it's kind of removal, but it's removal in a, a very roundabout way, in a way that you don't really control when it'll happen. It's a much more reactive kind of removal spell, and not something that I usually like to play. You know, I don't like to play Channel Harm, I don't like to play Arc Bond, I don't like to play any of those, so I don't necessarily think that I'd have this high in my list either. Our rare is not Damnation. It's black, but it's not Damnation. It is uh, Imp's Mischief. One and a black for a rare instant. Change the target of target spell with a single target. That's a lot of instants of target. <laughs> You lose life equal to that spell's converted mana cost. So basically, if you have a removal spell, 
uh, or a mind control spell or something like that coming at uh, a creature, you can uh, put it onto some other creature. You can make your opponent remove their own creature. You can uh, make your opponent mind control their own creature or whatever. And you lose life equal to its casting cost. Um, that seems not the best to me. I don't like usually taking the rare uh, reactive cards like this usually. Um, yeah, I mean, I see a place for Constructed. I see a place in Commander for this. I see a place in a lot of places, but I don't know that Draft is the place for it. And that's all for the pack. No foil damnation. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not super familiar with this format, but this pack felt a little bit weak to me. I think I'm looking at Reality Acid and Enslave and Reality Acid, as I talked about. I think it just seems too slow to me, so I think I'm just going to take the flat-out mind control. Uh, seems powerful. I get whatever the best creature my opponent has on board, and I lose a single life a turn. Not a big deal to me. Uh, uh, meanwhile, I'm swinging in with hopefully their giant creature or their creature with an awesome ability or something like that. So yeah, that was Planar Chaos. Uh, no damnation, unfortunately. Um, interesting to see these cards. I, as I said, I don't super know the format. I think I've drafted... Uh, time Spiral Block once or twice. Uh, and of course, I was focused more on the Future Sight pack, hoping to open a Tarmogoyf than I was on the Planar Chaos pack. Um, but yeah, if you have any experience with this format, definitely let me know. Let me know what your pick would have been in the comments below. Uh, I love seeing what other people's picks would have been to you know, learn myself. I, I, I hope that I can teach you guys some things. Uh, Planar Chaos, you're going to need to teach me some things. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, let me know. You can find me on Twitter at the Leak. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. And you can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Leak. You've already found me here on YouTube. As always, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, let me know. You should like the videos with the little thumbs up icon. That'll keep me uh, rising towards the top as I slowly claw my way up. And you should also subscribe to my channel. There's a subscribe button under each video and one at the outro at the end of each video. That'll uh, keep you up to date on all the latest Crack Pack Tuesdays, Wacky Wednesdays, Spiky Saturdays, Crack a Pack specials, and any other special videos that pop up here or there. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time.